Today, what should you spend money on? Hello. As the title says, we're going to be looking at five models you should spend your money on, and also five that you shouldn't. This isn't a be-all or end-all, just my personal views, so please don't get angry at me. So, off we start. Number one, Mainline Models Wagons. Mainline Models were a company who, for its time, created some really excellently detailed models. So much so, that whilst the model's values have depreciated to a couple of pounds at exhibitions, their value as a model hasn't. They can still stand up to modern standards. Okay, so if you pose it next to a newer Oxford Rail or Backman model, you can clearly tell it's the older model. But despite this, they're still decent models who shouldn't be completely disregarded because they're old. Number two, rubbish repaints on eBay. This is something that is slightly less common to come across, but is absolutely worth spending money on. Occasionally on eBay, you'll see a very modern loco that someone has just had a go at repainting either terribly or well enough, but just in the wrong livery. And because of either being wrong or bad, they'll be super cheap. For example, this BR Black Castle cost me £50. Now the castles never carried BR Black. As they're an express locomotive, they only ever carried fully lined BR Green. Whereas if this model was in mint condition in the original livery, it would cost anywhere between £100 to £150. Now, I know what you're thinking, but now you've got a model that's wrong or been painted badly. Well, you can either have a go at repainting it yourself, because I mean, for £50, you can feel relatively safe that you're not risking an expensive model, or you can send it off to someone to be repainted, and that will probably still be cheaper than a newer model. Plus, it'll also have the added bonus that the model now has a little story behind it. Number three, the Railroad 9F. For the upper class modelers out there, don't be put off that it's a railroad model. This, in my opinion, is the best model available in the railroad range. It has absolutely loads of power, so you can haul anything you stick behind it, it's loco drive, and still manages to have the gap underneath the boiler, as per the prototype. And as it's a BR freight loco, it has a super simple livery, meaning that the railroad simplified style of livery is actually pretty accurate. And if you're still not happy with it, there are some very small little extra jobs you can do to improve it, such as painting the roller bearing axles, the yellow and um, red stripe across it, replacing the buffers, these are Alan Gibson ones, very simple, or only a couple of quid, and they push in really easily. So it's semi-realistic. And also you could just replace the tender body. That last one so much isn't wholly necessary, as the previous tender body was adequate, but I just preferred this style of tender. But even without all that, it's still a great model for brand new, around £60. And second hand, even cheaper than that. Just be wary when you're out there not to get one of the old, old 9Fs, as they all had tender drive, and they're not as great. Number four, Hornby Terriers. Never before has there been such a widely liveried locomotive. Don't quote me on that, as I don't actually know if there has or not, but it feels relatively appropriate. Small, pretty, and surprisingly powerful. With all these liveries, I'm sure there's one somewhere to please everyone. And whilst it is an old model and not excessively detailed, it is still definitely worth buying. But just be wary, they can be horrendously overpriced. Hornby has one listed at the moment for £85.99. But if you look around and have a gander on eBay or exhibitions, you can easily pick one up for less than half of that. Lastly, number five, non-running Hornby or Lima HSDs. If you're on the market for an older HSD, have a look at some of the non-running ones first, as a common problem with the older ones is that they pick up a lot of dirt super easily. So a non-running HSD could in fact be a running HSD, but with incredibly dirty wheels. And with less than five minutes just cleaning the wheels and the contacts, it could bring it back to life. And you'll have got yourself a model for a lot less than what you could have done. 
So that's the five I would recommend spending money on and having in your collection. And now on to the less desirable list, the five that you shouldn't part cash with for. Number one, Hornby wagons. Not all of them, just some of their older open wagons. Expensive and not very good. My main gripe with these models is the couplings. They are massive, chunky, and not easily exchangeable, and just bring the overall look down of the whole model. Not to mention the chassis underframe detail just looks thick and clumsy, a bit like a few people I could mention. The livery application, however, as with all Hornby models, is on point, but livery alone doesn't justify the £17 price tag for a model that is more than likely over 30 years old. Number two, mainline models locomotives. Now I know what I said earlier about the wagons, and what I said earlier about the wagons actually does still apply to the locomotives, as the detailing on them is pretty good for a model of that vintage, and if you're wanting a dead loco to double head with, I couldn't recommend a mainline model for that job enough. But if you're after an engine to actually run with, steer clear of the mainline model range, as they're noisy, jerky, and the components are stuck into your part with no range of spare. Not to mention, if you're running DCC, they can be an absolute nightmare to fit a decoder to. Whilst they do all look pretty, try not to be tempted, and don't be too disappointed if you do go ahead with it, if they don't work all that great. Number three, the Railroad 08. There are a few locomotives that I have a dislike for more than the so-called Class 08 that you can find in the Railroad range. It hardly even looks like an 08, as it has more things wrong with it than it does right. The shape of the front grille, the lack of ladders at the front, the lack of everything on the buffer beams, the outside frame wheels instead of inside frame wheels. I literally loathe everything about this model. And for £60 that they have the audacity to ask for for such a model, you can easily pick up a far superior backbone offering. Or if you're lucky, maybe even one of their main range 08s, which looks absolutely superb. Number four. Recent Hornby GWR locomotives. As a great western man through and through, this pains me to say this, but recently Hornby have released some gorgeous great western models, specifically the Stars, the Castles and the Kings, all of which are retailing new for over £100, with some approaching the £200 mark for the baseline models. And all of them are the wrong shade of green. And that sounds petty, right? Well, no. The green isn't just a little bit out, it looks absolutely awful. And for models that are retailing in the triple digit range, you'd want it to be perfect. It's not like this is their first attempt at Great Western Green. I mean, looking at say the uh, 2800 class of a few years ago, or the previous generation King, the green looks acceptable. Not even that, it looked great. But now, not so much, which is annoying, as I'd really like some, as I'm quite a fan of these engines. Lastly, number five, Hornby four-wheel coaches. What even are these? They look like nothing I've ever seen. A bastardized toy coach on a wagon chassis put in almost as many liveries as the earlier mentioned Terrier. Granted, it's aimed at new modelers as a cheap entrance, providing you go nowhere near a new one at £18.99. Get fucked. But once you start to take modelling a bit more seriously, these should be disposed of. Either in the bin, or ideally just pass it on to someone else getting started to help them on their way, until they too can pass it on to the next unlucky punter. And there we have it. Five models to spend money on, and five to avoid. Before we finish, let's just have a quick check of the uh count. Today, that stands at... As the day wasn't about anything specific, this will be heading over to the Railway Children, a charity that helps children and young people off of the streets. And that brings it all to a close. Do you agree or disagree with it? Is there anything else that you would add to either of the lists? Let me know in the comments below. And don't forget to contemplate hitting the subscribe button. 